It's 2016 and you want to do some virtual reality racing in iRacing. The only problem is you don't have a supercomputer and you're unsure of what settings do what and how to get iRacing to work well with your head mounted display. But don't worry, because in this video we're going to go through the juicy settings that pertain to virtual reality with iRacing. By the end you'll not only feel sexy, but you'll also be able to tell that girl at the bar why she should maybe consider running a game at a resolution scale of 120% instead of the default 150. Turn up the music and take your clothes off. First of all, you're going to want to make sure that you have a supported VR headset. And at the making of this video, that's either the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive. Though, iRacing should also work with any OpenVR headset that loads into SteamVR. With that out of the way, let's get down and dirty into those settings. In all their wisdom, iRacing not only have in-game settings that allow you to change the visual fidelity and performance of the title, but they also have an important file hidden away like something from the X-Files, though uh, not nearly as mysterious or as exciting. The file shall be known as the renderer dx11.ini. Now this file not only contains all the settings found in the game, but it also contains some key juicy VR settings. The main one and the most impactful to performance is the Resolution Scale PCT or Resolution Scale Percent. What this does is it scales the resolution that the game is rendered at. And those of you familiar with VR will know if you render the resolution higher than the VR's display, you actually end up with a much more crisp and defined image. So it's often good to over render to uh, get a better quality view of things. Unfortunately, if you're on the cusp of VR and you have a slightly slower computer, this setting is incredibly taxing and the default of 150% is a little bit extreme. We found that knocking it down to 120% is the sweet spot between having an image that looks acceptable and getting the performance. Now if you're unfortunate enough to be using a computer from the 1930s and have a graphics card slower than the GTX 970, you might even want to knock it lower than 120%. Be forewarned though because knocking this setting down lower will make iRacing very blurry and essentially turn iRacing into an old age pensioner racing simulator where you can't see in front of you and the biggest challenge of the day is finding your teeth in the morning. Whilst you are moseying around this text file and changing settings, we'd also highly recommend changing the UI screen size to 130 and making sure the UI screen distance is set at 70. This makes the UI in-game slightly larger and easier to see. This not only changes the menu UI, but also the little black box with the sector, pit and uh, all the other details whilst you're racing. Another good setting to change which will save you at least one mouse click every session is the auto select option and the auto center option. All these do is remove the dialog box asking you if you want to use your head mounted display when you go to join a session. So they're well worth putting on and uh, enjoying that moment of laziness they provide. Now as we said previously, every single graphics option that you can set in game is also available in this text file. But for the sake of making this video look fancy and to help those of you that want to change settings in the game itself, we're now going to jump into the game where everything's shiny, mostly laser scanned and uh, also more accessible for people that don't know how to use computers. Do remember though to save your renderer dx11.ini after you've made changes. I'm sure one of you hasn't and are now thinking bugger me I've got to do those settings again. Bringing up the menu options inside of the game we can go to the graphics tab and you'll notice a plethora of settings that you can change. Now the resolution doesn't actually correspond to the headset resolution but it does correspond to the resolution of the mirrored view 
but you can just set that to as low as you want it doesn't seem to make much difference at all the ui zoom will affect the zoom scale of the ui which you can also change in that text file you can change that from here and make it bigger or smaller and it might actually be better to change it in the game so you can see which is more or less to your liking multi gpu support one gpu generally for virtual reality you're better off with a single gpu because sli tends to have issues with latency though moving into the future that's likely to improve especially with the direct direct x12 onwards now when we get to the nitty gritty of the performance settings typically the biggest performance impactor with all video games are things like anti-aliasing shadows dynamic lights and then the number of objects on the screen of course if you're fortunate and have a reasonably high-end machine say a graphics card above a gtx 970 like a 1070 or a 1080 you can probably put eye racing on near maximum settings and not worry about it in our case we're running on a gtx 970 which is pretty much at the edge of what's acceptable for vr also we tend to do a lot of streaming and so our computer is under a fair amount of load making it very tricky to get the performance from games required to hit that 90 fps at all times regardless the settings we've got here we believe represent the absolute best foundation low settings before you really start damaging the gameplay first of all we've got the cars pit objects event grandstands and particles all set to low detail now the grandstand and pit objects seem to be the most important settings in that they tend to introduce the biggest amount of frame rate variance especially when you're coming to the start finish line now you can put them to off but then the tracks will look absolutely terrible so we put them on low detail but those have the biggest impact to frame rate of those settings some of you might be surprised that we left particles on low detail but the reason we've done this is because it's actually quite core to the gameplay in that if someone makes a mistake and locks their wheels or goes off road it's really useful to be able to see some smoke or dust right in the distance before you get to it to evaluate how you're then going to approach the game or possibly an overtake in front of you crowds and objects are set to off because they really don't affect gameplay and uh, if you murder someone if there's no one to witness it, it it didn't happen headlights we've set to low detail you could probably turn them off but if you are driving at night it's probably advisable to actually have some form of headlights in the game max cars we've set to 17 again you could set this lower we just found 17 to be a good sweet spot to be able to see cars in the distance and uh, not have to worry about anything popping up around you frame rate limit make sure it's ticked to no limit because you don't want a limit you want it to just be hitting that 90 fps which it should cap itself at as a precaution i would turn the limit ac up to 101 and the battery up to 100 just in case there's something funny going on with the game and it takes those values max pre-friended range was set to off it doesn't seem to need to have any on and uh, again it should lower latency not having any pre-rendered frames anastrophic filtering you can just go all in on this because modern graphics cards don't struggle with this at all it's one of the things that since about 2007 or so graphics cards can do without thinking aa you might want to put this off to start with now you will get some jaggies despite over rendering at 120 if you're going by a text file settings but um you, you might want to just start with it off because it does impact frame rate if you've got a faster computer sure turn it up but it will have a very impact big impact on performance render dynamic track data we've got set to on again this is a gameplay aspect where you might want to see how many marbles are building up how the track developing it's quite useful to uh, to be able to see that and then respond to it we've turned off render dynamic tire data we've also turned off shadow maps now this does make the game look a bit fake and artificial because shadows are something quite important to making the world look real but it is a big impact on performance and uh, it's it's a sacrifice you might have to take we do have the night shadow maps box ticked but we don't do any nighttime racing so this is something you're going to have to find out for yourself turn everything on low and then gradually turn it up to see if it impacts the frame rate bear in mind though shadows and lighting will have a large impact on your performance moving over to the far right and almost to the end of our epic journey through the performance settings 
The biggest impact to performance here are going to be the cockpit mirrors, which you might want to turn down, but in VR, one of the huge aspects of immersion is being able to use the real car mirrors as you would a real car, so we stick them on and put them to the maximum of three. Different cars have different numbers of mirrors, so you could turn that down or up depending on what vehicle you're driving or the mirrors that you tend to like to use. Other than that, we've got the tri-linear filtering ticked because again, that's practically free in terms of performance with modern graphics cards. And we've also clicked the 2048 by 2048 car textures because generally textures, again, are something that modern graphics cards don't tend to struggle with. We haven't ticked the higher detail in mirrors, the headlights on track mirrors, far terrain, two pass trees, video mem swap high res cars or hide car number while testing. The main things there are things like higher detail in mirrors and the far track terrain. Really in VR the resolution is not there to particularly admire the far terrain and stuff like high details in mirrors is not going to impact the, the gameplay again because the resolution of your headset isn't particularly that good to really benefit from it. But there you go, that concludes pretty much all the graphics settings that you could want to set to get good performance in iRacing for your virtual reality headset. Of course all these tips and tricks are going to be incredibly useful in life and I've, I've made you a better person. Use all these tips and tricks on the attractive man or woman at your local pub and I'm sure it will go down a storm. If you find this useful and uh, if you enjoyed this, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel. We've got a Twitch channel, of course. We've got all the links in the video description, so you can just click on them if you're interested. If you're not, that's all right as well. So thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, I'll see you in the next video we make. Until then, goodbye. One of the other headsets that uses OpenVR, not just HTC Vive, I think Razer do one, and there'll probably be a whole bunch of Chinese headsets coming out in the, in the short-term future that will use OpenVR, then those should work with our racing as well, though you'll want to check that the specific headset.